I've gained about 35 pounds in the last month and a half. Shocking, I know. I have lost a little bit of the self-control that I usually lean on to keep my weight in check. Today, we're gonna talk about tactics that I'm going to use to get myself back to where I wanna be for my competition in March. I know that some of you also struggle with your weight, so I want this video to be kind of a commiseration between us, but also have some tactics, some tips, some strategies that you could use to continue your weight loss or fitness journey. Now remember, your individual journey needs to be your individual journey. Just because I am on a journey to lose fat does not mean that you have to. Take a critical look in the mirror, try to come to some decisions about how you feel, first and foremost, and then how you look and make nutrition choices around those two parameters. First things first is we're getting back to tracking. I have been tossing around the idea of using a more intuitive eating style. Let me tell you, I don't think that that works for me. I've done it for the past month and a half, and I've gained 30 to 35 pounds. I think you could say that that was a failure. Not an indictment against intuitive eating, just an indictment against me personally intuitively eating. I'm someone that likes raw data. I like to collect numbers. I like to collect measurements. So counting calories, counting macros, tracking food has always been something that I really have leaned on. And that has created an environment in which I can have a lot of weight loss success. Time for another conversation on individual differences, my friends. Just because tracking works really well for me, that doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. It is important for you to find a nutrition context that you can utilize, stick to and find success. Whether that is following a specific diet like keto or paleo or carnivore, rigidly tracking like I like to do, or you have success with intuitive eating, that's fine. This is not a channel about nutrition, dietary tribalism. I don't care what method you use. I want you to be the best version of yourself. However you wanna look, however you wanna feel, however you wanna support your sport, that is the nutrition context that I want you to find. So go ahead and find yours. As for the physical side of things, we're gonna get back to stepping. We're setting a daily step count at 10,000 to begin. So as I continue to get further and further down the nutrition journey and closer and closer to my goal. If my weight hasn't really come off the way that I want it to, then we'll probably push the steps up again. I don't think walking is the cure-all. I do think that walking is a great way to standardize your daily energy expenditure, especially when you get deeper into a diet. As you get deeper and deeper into a diet, your body subconsciously or involuntarily doesn't really want to move as much. There's not a lot of fidgeting. There's not a lot of your daily movement. You, you just kind of want to sit on the couch. So having a standardized step goal that you go for every single day can help you keep that total daily energy expenditure at a level that you're used to. And as you continue to drop the calories down, you keep that expenditure right here. You continue to be in a deficit. The biggest hurdle for me is going to be the mental side of things. I will tell you at the beginning of November, I was incredibly burnt out on nutrition, dieting, weight loss, whatever it is. I fully felt like I just wanted to throw caution to the wind, get back up to 330 pounds and just live my life. I feel incredibly comfortable with the way that I look, which is a little bit of a double-edged sword. Sure, I don't have body composition issues that are causing me to get on the path towards disordered eating. That's fantastic. But I also don't have the positive aspects of a little bit of negative body image because I feel fine with the way that I look. And that allows me to just say, you know what? Give me that second cheeseburger. I don't care, I'm secure in who I am. I find that it's very much like stress. If you have way too much stress, you're gonna die. If you don't have any stress at all, you don't have anything pushing you forward to accomplish the tasks that you want to accomplish. I feel very good with how I look, don't really have any issues that way. But that is causing a little bit of, eh, whatever. I can eat whatever I want, I'll be totally fine. I like the way I look, I'm happily married, not a big issue. What I don't like is walking into the gym for a powerlifting session, seeing a set of eight and thinking, oh Lord, how is my cardiovascular fitness gonna hold up when I'm doing this? I have experienced a marked drop in performance in terms of my volume. Am I strong? 
sure. Still very strong, still hitting PRs, still tracking to have a very successful meet in March. That would be all well and good if powerlifting was the only thing that I cared about. But spoiler alert, it's not the only thing that I care about and I don't think it should be the only thing you care about either. Life is more than powerlifting. Powerlifting can be an incredible boost to your daily life, but it is not the only thing that you have to live for. I have to look forward. I have to look 30, 40 years down the road. Sure, it would be great to be able to sit at 330, 20, 50, whatever pounds, be as strong as possible, but if I can't walk upstairs without getting winded, it's not worth it. Uh-oh, time for individual differences again. <laughs> you have to find the weight class and the walking around weight that works best for you. Maybe you're on the cusp of a world record in the 140 plus kilo weight class, meaning you're 330, 40, 50, 60 pounds, and you're so close that if you continue to fill that weight class out, you will experience positive change towards that world record. Go for it, dude. I am not here to tell you that you need to lose weight and cut down to 270 and keep an eye on your future. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. I can't make that decision for you. Individually, you have to come to terms with that. For me, it is not worth the strain that it puts on my heart, the negative impact that I feel in my day-to-day -day activities to continue to carry this much weight. And so I have to use that realization that this is not healthy for me in the long term. No matter how I feel about how my body looks, I'm strong, I love the way that I look, it is not setting me up for success. If I took a cholesterol test today, I don't think I'd be doing very well. If I checked my blood pressure, again, don't think it's where I want it to be. So those factors are what is pushing me towards a body composition change. Whether it's muscle gain, fat loss, conquering maintenance, I hope that you can use the power of the blank slate of the new year to really accomplish those goals. Come along with me, let's make this a journey together. Join our Discord, be a part of it, start to build a community because it's a lot easier to achieve these massive changes when you have support behind you. Thank you so much for watching. As always, it is truly an honor that you chose to click on my video. If some of the nutrition content flew over your head today, you can click on this video right here to learn a little bit more about calorie deficits. There's gonna be a ton of new content coming out on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Get strong and stay strong.